are ever found in the ongoing journey. As the congregation grew under Mother Gerald, her leadership was recognized by Rome. She was appointed to chair an intercongregational committee to bring a national organization of Mothers General into being. The Conference of Major Superiors of Women was the result. Later, the members changed the name to the Leadership Conference of Women Religious. By the time of Mother Gerald's death in 1961, the members of the congregation had reached approximately 2,400. With her demise, an era in the life journey of the congregation was coming to an end. A new defining moment for the Church and the Order occurred in 1963 when Pope John XXIII called the Church to a Giornamento renewal. Within his larger view of history, Pope John saw that older forms and outmoded practices were in need of reformation in order to meet the needs of a new time, to an opening of the windows of the Church and letting fresh air in. He recognized that the Church is always in need of reformation and that the need had to extend to the orders and congregations within the Church as well. A special call to the religious congregations to renew themselves went out after Vatican Council II. Mother Mary Genevieve Weber, successor to Mother Gerald, led the congregation in preparation for the general chapter of renewal. Once convened, it lasted for three summers and considered over 300 proposals that had been submitted by the sisters. The result was a sea change in the congregation's self-understanding as a community of vowed Dominican women. Reflection on the Dominican charism revealed its enduring character as missionary, while some of the forms and practices that had crept in over time needed change. Called to renewal, the Adrian Dominican sisters began to examine all facets of their religious life, their Dominican heritage, their roots in a cloistered Dominican monastery in Regensburg, Germany, their singular commitment to education and health care in the United States, their emerging understanding of mission, their identity as women in the order, the church, and the world, their theology of religious life, their mode of governance, the spirituality that had informed their lives. Everything opened up and revealed levels of disquiet below the surface of the sisters' lives. Attention turned to the individual sister, her talent and qualifications for ministries. Times of painful letting go ensue, loss of homely customs dearly held, of ease and familiar ways of praying, living, and serving the church. While the ministries of the Adrian Dominican sisters had focused upon education and to a lesser extent on health care, a return to the original inspiration of the order led them to see that these important ministries flowed from a more universal commitment to mission. Mission encompasses more than a single ministry. It is broader in scope and includes ministries, formation of community and preaching unique to Dominicans. A line from the Vatican II document on the church in the modern world was the most influential for mission. The joys and hopes, the grief and anguish of the people of our time, especially of those who are poor and afflicted, are the joys and hopes, the grief and anguish of the followers of Christ as well. The experience of the sisters at home in the United States and overseas had given them firsthand knowledge of situations in the world that called for response, particularly for the poor in inner cities, developing countries, and economically and politically oppressed peoples. Various initiatives were undertaken by the congregation, and individual sisters were facilitated in using their particular talents in needed ministries. Turning in humility and faith to seeking truth about themselves, their lives and ministry through modern methods of research, the sisters grew in wholesome confidence, fearless in risking for the kingdom's sake.
The sisters came to realize that mission was not their unique vocation. Others shared it. As a result, one of the decisions of the renewal chapter of 1968 was the authorization of an associate program. This program has expanded and matured. In 1978, the congregation adopted a mission statement that united the concepts of mission and identity. In the mission of Jesus, we, we Adrian, Adrian Dominican sisters, discover, discover and identify ourselves as, as women, women called together to share, to share faith and life with, with one, one another, another and, and sent into our world to, to be, be with others, bearers, bearers and recipients of his love, co-creators of his justice and peace. This statement emphasized that the Adrian Dominican sisters are women engaged in mission, that their ministry is carried out in their world, and that they cooperate with others in their ministries, that efforts in ministry were directed to justice and peace, aspects of God's love. Then come exciting years of branching out, the setting free of talents, hidden gifts, the calling forth of long-held hopes and dreams with visions of a future vague in human eyes but clear in God's. Just as the Vatican II documents identified the Church as the people of God, so the congregation identified itself as the communion of its members. This perception led to an examination of authority structures and to the conviction that evangelical authority resides in the total community. Once again, turning to the inspiration of St. Dominic, the sisters began to examine governance. For Dominic, law and governance were freeing for the members of the order. To accomplish more freedom for mission, the sisters put in place a series of groups linking those at local levels to intermediate levels and to the leadership of the congregation. The arrangement allowed for initiatives in mission to begin with the sisters at local levels and in that way to respond to the needs that they experienced. The congregation's reflection on the prescribed forms of prayer turned attention to the motto of the order, to contemplate and to give to others the fruits of contemplation. Free to pray in ways that most suited them, the sisters adopted forms of scripturally based prayer and emerging new spiritualities. Substitutes for the little office of the Blessed Virgin, long chanted daily without variance, were sought. Initially, abbreviated English forms of the breviary were adopted for communal use, but something was still missing, particularly prayer forms free from patriarchal language. Sisters began to seek spiritual direction in order to deepen their relationships with God, and some members of the congregation were trained in spiritual direction to meet the increasing need. Many found inspiration in feminist, ecological, liberation, ethnic, and other spiritualities that related to their experience. Writers on spirituality, particularly women, were avidly read. A project undertaken with other Dominican women's congregations resulted in the publication of Dominican Praise, a new edition of Common Prayer produced by Dominican women scholars that features inclusive language and is widely used. It is a source of unity in prayer and provides the dimension of common prayer in the tradition of the order. It offers the opportunity for common choral prayer as an option along with private prayer. On the Adrian campus, it is used for daily prayer by the community. In light of the times, a weekly prayer for peace open to the public was begun and continues. Another instance of intercongregational cooperation with other Dominican sisters is the collaborative Dominican novitiate for the formation of new members. Over the years of renewal, a new constitution and statutes for the congregation was written. It encompassed all of the insights that had developed in this important phase of the congregation's journey of transformation. For the first time, it represented a true foundation for the apostolic Dominican women of Adrian. It received approval from Rome on April 29, 1989. The sisters responded to their newfound freedom for mission within the parameters set by their general chapters. A holy 